So, hi everyone, uh, I'm uh, Zoe Mustafa. Um, before I go into it any further, I'm going to be going through this quite fast, so the presentation will be on Twitter later. Um, so, are we really innovating? Um, innovation in digital marketing and e commerce touch points is occurring at an unprecedented pace. It used to be just about this display advertising, SEM, a little bit of affiliate marketing. It looks a bit more like this these days. <laughs> um, the marketing technology ecosystem to manage uh, communications on these touch points is also mind blowing. Uh, the slide on the, the next, the graphic on the next slide uh, showcases 350 different companies uh, with 45 different categories of the various types of technology we can use to manage all our, our, our uh, touch points. Um, the, imp the input method is still QWERTY. Um, the only way we can interact with all these touch points is by typing. Um, and typing is, is a skill and a cumbersome if you don't know how. Uh, touch screens are awkward to use. Uh, hardware and input method innovation seems to have stalled. Uh, smartphones have a ground dog they feel about them. Uh, that's probably why they're suing each other. <laughs> um, despite, uh, many websites have not enabled social logins. Um, there's nothing more annoying uh, than uh, filling out forms or registering when trying to buy something online. And on an iPad or, or a smartphone, it's double the effort. And in multi-user households, you know, what do you do? Log out, eat, log each other out. It, it can be quite uh, tedious. Um, so have we really innovated? It feels more like Web 1.5 instead of Web 2.0. Uh, consumers will innovate even if we don't. Um, Multi-screen consumer behavior has become mainstream. Uh, so there's some interesting trends in consumer behavior that are emerging. The likes of Google, Ofcom, and Accenture um, have done a spate of studies uh, with all one, with all one point. Um, consumers are looking for an integrated experience on the internet, uh, and they're crisscrossing be between devices as they do this. So who would have thought uh, that we would be talking today about uh, multi-screening? Uh, multi sorry. Uh, this is a, the Google guys will recognize this probably. Um, so this is a, a Google multi-screen report. Uh, basically, the UK is a multi-screening nation. Uh, device use is driven by context. Uh, there are two main modes of multi-screening, so sequential and simultaneous screening. Um, uh, TV has lost our full attention, and um, search is still the, the, the crux of how we do things. 90% of media interactions involve a screen, and we're doing that between four key devices. And smartphones are the most common device when we're multi-screening. So we're multitasking across multi-channels uh, uh, via multi-screens. So clearly there is some innovation. Uh, I'm going to go through a few quick examples now. Classrooms, maps, and even the grocery shop. Uh, the, the guys from Tesco uh, may recognize the shopping mall on the right. Basically what that is is pictures and barcodes, you, uh, scan it, which you scan with your mobile order there and then, and they deliver groceries to your house. So what's the common denominator in all this? Well, it's screens. Um, screens are all part of our lives, whether it's work, rest, play. And the biggest screen of all that's at home, the TV is a lot smarter these days. Uh, it's a lot more social, and we can control it with a uh, combination of touch, gesture, and voice. Um, there's an opportunity in smart TV uh, that it's, uh, you know, within the, the, it's about being in the living room, there's an opportunity. Um, the devices are personal, but it's all about sharing the experience. The content that can be shared is, is going to be valuable. Um, there's uh, going to be one billion smart TVs within uh, globally by 2016. My old employers, QVC, were trading on TV, web, mobile, interactive TV uh, as early as 2006. Uh, we had a heady mix of 3% conversion uh, for new visitors, 19% conversion for repeat visitors. And the secret, of of the secret was rich content on multiple channels. They've even created a new uh, touch point called social infomercials, which is basically the TV content they're putting on YouTube. And, and Gartner have just named them the poster child for social commerce, so I was quite impressed by that. Um, despite all the signs, um, we don't watch TV when it's broadcast. 
We're, we're forwarding the ads, we're watching more content on demand. And despite all these signs, um, and pay TV subscriptions are flatlining, as are the number of hours spent viewing TV. Bizarrely, we're still seem to be spending lots of money on TV advertising. In the UK, uh, revenues have gone up 2.2% year on year. So if you think advertising and marketing have changed in the last 10 years, we haven't seen anything yet. The input method is finally changing to be more inclusive, um, and it's not just relying uh, on QWERTY input. New developments in UI and UX will, will be mass market before we know it. This chart uh, by uh, Envisioning Tech which, um, attempts to map the major developments uh, and, and, and advancements. Uh, looking at the, uh, the emerging trends in research, they've tried to predict and draw conclusions about how tech is developing. Basically, they're stating by, uh, by speculating by speculating about what lies beyond, we can make better, better decisions of what to create ahead, or today, sorry. I'm going to be focusing on a few examples on these two columns there. So the web as we know it is changing profoundly. <coughs> Smartphone sales have overtaken PC sales. Tablets will be next. And within 10 to 15 years, touch screens as we know them are going to be obsolete, and the, the, the advertising and e-commerce dynamic is going to shift again. Uh, so to highlight from that, that, that chart that I flipped through really quickly, just gesture recognition. So Marcus, uh, Nissan created an experience on Connect, which allows people to view and experience the Pathfinder virtually. Um, so various angles uh, and perform various actions. You can open a door, you can push the chairs down, change the color of the car. Now they initially put this in the showrooms, but imagine if you could do this from home, do some initial research before, before booking your test drive. To highlight speech recognition, I want to talk about MindMail. This is a conference call app which, is, which listens to your conversation and serves up dynamic content based on keywords from your, from your discussion. <laughs> Team calls are never going to be the same again. So Disney, yeah, and yes, Disney have developed a technology that turns virtually any, any material into a touchscreen. So couches, um, doorknobs, clothes, tabletops, They'll all behave as if they're your um, mobile phone, your TV screen, or your um, uh, internet browser. Um, and the, but the cool thing about this is they can even target a, a particular user, so it means targeting and personalization. Apple and Nokia are working on a patent for 3D display technology that mimics a hologram without requiring special glasses. If you've seen the Avengers movie, this is basically the technology that they're saying their patents can do. And basically, each eye of each viewer receives a different angle of light of the image floating in midair. Best of all, again, it detects who is watching and will display different images, meaning, again, personalization and offers. Again, another Google example. Um, I'm sure we've seen a lot of coverage about Google Glasses. So think smartphone and camera that sits on your, on your head. Again, serves as your mobile phone, voice activated, and not a QWERTY keyboard in sight. So in conclusion, marketing and e-commerce in 2025 will still be about search. It will still be the center of it all, but it will be affected by voice and gesture. New technology will literally bring anywhere and any time and any how to life. And it's all going to be about hyper-personalization, so behavior, DNA, build, and body size. Now, I've really sped through this, this presentation. Um, there's two videos online that I really recommend going and watching that embody visually what is to come. And this is one, uh, the Microsoft vision of the future, and calling day, uh, a day made of glass. It's literally like you're watching Minority Report. That's it. Uh, nothing else to say. Any questions?